Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today we're talking about the differences between control voltages and MIDI and what might be right for a certain situation. Now, if you already use control voltages and use MIDI to any degree of complexity, this video is going to be too simple for you. And if you hear me say something and you think, wow, there's 12 different reasons why I could do it a different way and so that's not right, I get it. I mean, if you're buying a synthesizer, it's because you want complexity. You want lots of variables. I mean, you literally have a synth that might have 100 parameters on it and each of those values might go between 0 and 100 or 0 and 127. Yeah, this is a little bit complex, but I'm going to try today to just talk about the most simple points of the two and why you might want them. So first let's talk about control voltages. It's usually a low voltage that goes from 0 to 5 volts or 0 to 10 volts, and it can go from 0 to positive 5 volts, it could go from 0 to negative 5 volts, it might do both. So if it only goes in one direction we call that unipolar, and if it goes in both directions we call it bipolar. And there are standards, like I said, 5 and 10 are standards, but there are others. And going back to the 60s, control voltages were really the only way you could move any of the parameters on a synthesizer other than moving the parameters by hand, which is also equally valid. And for that reason, you should see the connection that when you get a voltage going to a particular parameter, like this knob here, if you send zero, and then send plus 5, if this is a plus 5 synth, then it will be the equivalent as if I just grabbed that knob and went from minimum to maximum. And the two are additive, so if I have this halfway up, and you go halfway up on voltage, it's actually going to open that parameter all the way up. The two add together, wherever the knob is, and whatever voltage you're adding to it. The word that we use for that is bias. In other words, wherever you put that knob is biasing the center of where those control voltages are affecting. If you put the knob all the way up, you obviously can't go any higher. If you put the knob all the way down, you obviously can't go any lower. The beauty of control voltages is that they're moving at the speed of electricity, which is just shy of the speed of light, so pretty fast. And all of the motions of the electricity's voltage are represented by a motion in that parameter. They're analogous, hence analog. Analog simply means that as this moves, it moves something else in an exact repeatable way, in an exact ratio. It's analog. So like I said, it was a way in past times for something to move something, whether it was a keyboard that sent higher and higher voltage as you went up the keyboard, and then that went to pitch, or every time I hit a note, it sent what's called a gate where the voltage goes up, and then it stays there till you let go of the key and it comes down. That might go to an envelope or other things as well. All of that really reacted near the speed of light. And so it worked out really well, and you could do extremely fast modulation. You could send one oscillator to another, and it would be very, very, very perfect because there's no digitizing, there's no aliasing, there's no uh, latency where it has to go into a computer and be calculated and then be sent to something else. It's been around for a long time, but then people wanted presets. You know, they wanted a synthesizer where they could go to patch two, and all of a sudden everything would change to that sound, patch 3, etc. That's very hard to do with a whole bunch of wires, uh, but again, you're trading off the complexity and the intricacy and the analogness of having analog and control voltages. So why would you want MIDI? Well, the beauty of MIDI is, first of all, it's digital. You know, it's a 5-pin DIN or a 5-pin DIN to 3.5 millimeter TRS, and then that goes into something. It's certainly much more repeatable and it's much more storable and recallable in a computer or a DAW or something like that. And it also lets you do lots of complexity. You could have a hundred notes each going on 16 different MIDI channels all at the same time. And it'll be a little bit clogged up, but you could still do it, and you could certainly do 16 channels of 10 notes at a time without trouble, and you can have all your knob motions and everything else. So how do you choose which one is best? Well, first of all, you may not have a choice. So for example, this Moog Mavis is an analog synthesizer, it's a monophonic, and it is truly all analog. And by that I mean there are no MIDI 
converters in here. There are no MIDI ins, no MIDI outs. The only way to get to this is with control voltages on the panel here. So we don't have to worry about that one. You can't use MIDI with it, okay? And so there are gonna be lots of Eurorack modules that can't do anything with MIDI. There are some that do. Now there are plenty of keyboards out there that only have MIDI, uh, either via five pin DIN or USB. And so you have no way of using control voltages on those, so that's easy too. Where the question comes, which do I use, is when you have the ability to do both. Here's an example. The East Beast by Create Audio, it certainly has patch points for pitch and envelope and FM and filter cutoff and, and various things in the, in the amplifier. And it also has outputs that you can send elsewhere. And so clearly you can run this from control voltages. But I've also got a little symbol here that's showing a five pin DIN. And so I can take something like this and plug in and play MIDI that way. So which way should you do? Well, it really comes down to what else are you using? And so here we have Nifty Keys by Create Audio. And it has a Eurorack rack as well as a power supply for it, but it also has a keyboard that has velocity and aftertouch. You got mod wheel, pitch wheel, expression. It has real MIDI in and out, five pinned in. It also has USB that you can do MIDI in and out, but it also has control voltages that can go to all your different modules. So now I'm gonna just give you some examples of why you might want CV. And the easiest way to say it is if you want the ability to get extremely complex by mixing voltages that are each doing things and have them instantly respond, because again, we're near the speed of light, that's gonna tend to make things sound a little glitchy if you want them to. So if you're going for glitchy, control voltages just beat MIDI hands down. All right, so to show off something glitchy, I'm using Cells, also by Create Audio, and it's a little touch pad, a little capacitance touch pad that sends out two different voltages for pitch and two different gates. So I can run two different things off, and I'm only gonna run one thing at the moment. And for every one of these little beehive cells, I can set an exact pitch. I have a bunch of random ones I've just thrown on there. But watch how quickly I can jump pitch and how glitchy I can make it sound by holding multiple ones and having it go into some sort of arpeggiation. And, and I'm not using this as a derogative term, but it's glitchy, right? Now, to be clear, it's not because it can go very high pitch and very low pitch that I'm saying it sounds analog. It's the way that it can just jump so rapidly to different notes and the notes do not have to be in any kind of Western tuning. Um, it's all settable by hand. And again, that can be an analog type of setting. So again, very analog. But this particular synth, the East Beast, can also run on MIDI, which means I can take the MIDI out of my Arturia Keystep Pro put this little adapter that comes with the East Beast and plug that into the MIDI in. And I can even pull the other things and it should play very accurately. And MIDI is definitely a way to go if you have multiple choices. MIDI is definitely the way to go if tuning and consistency on the tuning all the way across multiple octaves is very, very important. And that of course becomes very important when you're playing polyphony because slightly out of tune lead lines are kind of interesting. Slightly out of tune chords sound like sour milk. So uh, in that particular case, you know, MIDI synths that are polyphonic tend to work better with MIDI instead of via control voltages. And I should say that historically, when we were using control voltages in the 60s, the components were much more sensitive to heat and other external influences. And so it was very hard to get your keyboard to tune. You had to scale it. You had to temper it just right so that the voltages were not only right in this section, but in this section and in this section. And so 
there was a, well, you should always just use MIDI when you can kind of thing. But the Nifty Keys here is an example. And in the way that I had MIDI coming out of that directly into this module, I could instead go into the Nifty Keys. And now the Nifty Keys is going to create an analog voltage that goes to this. And it should work pretty darn good. I mean, these things have gotten so much better than in the old days when I was a kid. Um, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. Envelope in and it should just work. And so in this case, I'm using MIDI, but then the MIDI is turning into control voltages and the control voltage is going into the module. And frankly, when I do MIDI directly into it, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm just using a MIDI converter that's built in that's sending control voltages to the oscillators. So it's kind of getting to be all one thing. So here's an example of how control voltage can do something really beautiful that's very, very expressive and very responsive to what you do. And to show that, I'm going to use my new Moog EtherWave Theremin. Uh, it's similar in a lot of ways to the original EtherWave Plus, uh, but it has been modernized and it has control voltage outs for volume and pitch and gate. And it's very easy to calibrate those by lifting this thing off the top. And so very cool to have. And so now I'm taking the pitch control voltage out and I'm putting it in here. And right now I'm gonna gate with the key, so I have to press a key. But I just wanna show you how much control, how much analog control I have over the pitch. And notice how every little gesture that I make is instantly changing the pitch of that sound. Uh, no delay, no misinterpretation. It's like my hand is connected to that oscillator. Okay, now that I have the theremin's voltage going into the filter cutoff, and I've gone back to having the nifty keys play the note and the gate, I should be able to hit a note and change the filter. And again, notice that you have that same uh, analog connection at the speed of near light, you know? So now I'm gonna do an arpeggiation via the nifty keys, but control the filter cutoff via the antenna. And then I'll turn on some ping pong delay. I've got the source audio nemesis delay set to ping pong. And so we'll get a nice stereo image out of that. So there's an example of where a physical controller that's true analog going directly to something that's accepting control voltages really is a better way to go. If I had a MIDI theremin like the Theremini and connected that to a, a MIDI filter, um, it would still work, but it, you, you definitely might hear the stepping because even with 127, 128 steps, 
Um, if the sweep is wide enough, you might hear a little bit of stair stepping. And so now I'm going to use the function junction by Create Audio. It's an analog module that can do ADSRs as well as LFOs and various things in between. It could also be a mixer. It's a very powerful little tool. But right now I'm going to use it to make a, a very precise LFO that I can shape in real time that can go very fast. So again, I have the Moog Mavis here. And I should be able to just get a note out of it. Okay, now I'm going to take this function generator and I'm going to go into its pitch and I'm going to use it to not only shape this repeating envelope, but I'm going to shape its curve as well. And then I'm going to speed it up really fast and do things that you typically could not do just in MIDI. So there's an example of something that just isn't going to happen in the digital world, although you're going to write me and say, yeah, all these new digital synthesizers can do that at that speed, perhaps, but I know this can. If you're using synthesis to primarily play real instruments, pianos, organs, vibraphones, you know, drums and things like that, and you're recording it to a computer, a DAW, uh, then MIDI is certainly a way to go because it's very easy to store MIDI. It's very easy to manipulate MIDI. And now again, some of you will say, yeah, but there are devices now that let you record analog motions in your DAW and you can use certain uh, audio interfaces to do that. Yeah, I get it. But if you're at that level of complexity, you have no business watching this video. If you're just trying to play regular standard 12 tone music and you just want everything in tune as possible, and you want the ability to record it, manipulate it, send it back, then obviously MIDI. If you're going for a sound that doesn't sound like it came out of a white and black keyboard, but is something completely different, then control voltage is the way to go because you can add them and subtract them and multiply them and switch them in and out and just do so many amazing things simultaneously. And again, it's speeds that digital has a hard time keeping up with. And if you have stuff that only has control voltages, now you have to decide whether you want something that sends control voltage only or control voltage and MIDI. I always use this Arturia Keystep Pro because it does both of them brilliantly. And in other tests, I've proven that the MIDI out to a Moog synthesizer and the analog out to the Moog synthesizer, they both sounded in tune. And so I was very impressed with all of that. So hopefully that just gives you some idea of the differences between the two and how you use them. If you have any questions about any of the Create Audio gear, the Moog gear, or the Arteria Keystep Pro, the Moog Theremin, Etherwave, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.